Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to or welcome back to Kovacs Corner. We got another React video for you guys. We are taking a look over at the homie Faker, Quest Log Faker. All video and creator pages will be down in the description below. Also, feel free to become a channel member. You have access to videos before anybody else. And pretty much just to support the channel, man. Everything goes back into the channel. Hit me up on any one of my other social media platforms down in the description below as well. But we are taking a look at Fakers. Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't the same without an anime. So, I, see, I haven't watched the video, but i seen it. And I was like, yo, this seems kind of interesting. So, we're pretty much going to be reacting to it together. Hopefully, everyone will enjoy. If you enjoy, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we are about to get into it. Let's check it out. Also, if this is something that you're into, feel free to check his page out, like, sub, all that good stuff. You know what I mean? Link will be down below. Let's go. You won't find anyone quicker to criticize Magic the Gathering than me. And chief among my long list of incredibly valid and handsome complaints is the seismic shift in the game's design philosophy to becoming... That was funny, though. Tap is dumb slang. <laughs> I tap this. <laughs> and handsome complaints is the seismic shift in the game's design philosophy to becoming a commander first product. Now, before. You so, like, I'm actually trying to learn commander because I got a couple homies at work that actually play Magic the Gathering. If you've seen the streams, I've talked about it a couple times. And, like, yeah, I'm trying to get into commander. I want to see where it goes. It's not like traditional Magic the Gathering in the game's design philosophy to becoming a commander first product. Now, before you give me your um actuallys in the comments, let me clarify that this is more of a personal beef that I have with what I feel is splitting your game's player base. Then any So it's his own personal view. Everyone has their own personal opinions about it. We're just here to react thing in particular about wizards or magic. One of the biggest fears I have with our small beloved hobby is that intro First for Yu Gi Oh! Championship Series Japan Tokyo 2024 event. Recognize Guinness World Record. Achieve it for the most entries in train card game tournament. Yu Gi Oh! Master Duel was the highest grossing battle battle mobile game in 2022. Thursday report from Mobile App Data Analytics uh, from Centaur reveal the game's Android and iOS versions pulled over 130 million in revenue globally. Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people paid for their decks on that game. Producing alternate and it goes to show, the but then again, you're able to play tournaments. Between our already limited player base, and will hurt the game in the long run. As one of the formats will ultimately prove to be more profitable than the other, and necessarily demand the most attention. It's possible that Speed Duel, both Paper and Duel Links, and Time Wizard events have already assuaged that fear. But it's clear that both are designed to be subservient products. This is one of the reasons that I think Rush Duels have not yet been brought over to the West as a standalone product, and not... What was that about Rush Duels? Because, like, I wasn't really into Rush Duel. Like, it was cool. Probably for the first two weeks that it came out, I wasn't really too enthused about it. Speed Duel is more fun, in my opinion, just due to the fact that it's more so like dueling, right? Sure that you have only the three spaces instead of the five and the only one turn instead of the two, but it's, it's fun. ...that I think Rush Duels have not yet been brought over to the West as a standalone product, and not just a feature of Duel Links. All this to say that while I heckle Magic for its fractured player base, I don't know that I've ever seen a community more divided in which media it consumes than Yu-Gi-Oh. A clear line of demarcation exists between people who loved and lived by the anime, and players who have never seen and won't touch it. I don't think I've ever met a Pokemon TCG player who didn't play the games or watch the show. Granted, the average age of such players is roughly 12, and it would be ridiculous to imagine a One Piece player who hadn't made that long journey at least once but it's not only it's funny that he says about pokemon players usually being the age of 12 every tournament that i go to there's dudes in their late 20s early 30s into their 40s that are there with like crazy decks and just like crushing kids like straight up taking a children's card game and just crushing kids with it it's it's pretty funny sometimes common for us to meet a Yu-Gi-Oh player who hasn't watched any Yu-Gi-Oh aside from maybe some DM as a child, it's expected. You might say that this is because Pokemon and One Piece are massive, ongoing media franchises while Yu-Gi-Oh is not. And while I think that's now true, it wasn't always the case. 
There has now been a drought of Yu-Gi-Oh! anime for nearly five years. Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns, considered by many the best main series anime, ended in 2019. And while Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens would get dubbed and introduced to English-speaking audiences through channels like Disney XD and Hulu, again that line in the sand exists. Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens and Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush are not Yu-Gi-Oh! animes. They're Rush Duel animes. And it's hard to find any crossover appeal with the TCG audience, something they were able to do extremely extremely well in Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns. I'm also not saying that there's anything wrong with Rush Duels or Sevens or Go Rush for that matter. I've played enough Rush Duel in Duel Links to comfortably claim that I think it's fun, albeit for a totally different reason than the TCG. And I would write That's a true. strongly worded letter to Konami to advocate for adopting the Rush Duel card format in the TCG. While I'm not Seven's greatest defender, I've watched a few episodes subbed and I don't find anything offensive about it. But it isn't Yu-Gi-Oh! For so many in our community, myself included, the and I agree that it's not Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh, you, you like kind of had to be there at the birth of Yu-Gi-Oh when it came to the West just for like the anime because the anime is what made Yu-Gi-Oh what Yu-Gi-Oh is today, in my opinion, over here in the West anyway. Because a good majority of us ended up watching it. We're like, damn, that's dope as fuck. I want to play that. That looks cool where are the cards because pokemon came out with cards essentially like right away because they had the anime the video games and the pokemon tcg pop out all right away magic the gathering has always been magic the gathering there's not really uh animated series about it and whatever but for like nostalgia reasons for people our age it's like grew up watching it right it's like yo everyone was super into pokemon the original pokemon cards everybody wanted them and stuff and then when Yu-Gi-Oh! dropped, it was like, this is different. This is something cool. It's more competitive. It's more geared towards uh, teenagers at that point in time. Where it's like Pokemon looked, got looked at like it was Kitty. And then Yu-Gi-Oh! came out. And then after Yu-Gi-Oh! came out, everyone was super hype about it. It's like, yo, we want to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And it took them a little bit longer to come out with the card game. Compared to how Pokemon just literally dropped back to back to back kind of thing, you know? anime is Yu-Gi-Oh. Whether it be from childhood nostalgia or simply seeing the cards that we play brought to life on the screen, Yu-Gi-Oh as a franchise has enough consistent attributes to form a continuity across series. Zexal or Vrains, 5Ds or GX, from the hair to the stare, we know what makes a Yu-Gi-Oh anime. And it should be no surprise that many of the most popular archetypes among fans are archetypes from the anime. Dark Magicians, Hero, Altergeist, Super Heavy Samurai, some of the decks with the most unique and mechanically interesting playstyles and visual designs come from the anime. Unfortunately, what looks best on screen and what plays best in a YCS are rarely congruent. And while many of these decks have limited or no competitive success, we all know what hoops Konami jumped through to get Blue Eyes to win Worlds. These <laughs> decks are still the heart and soul of many players. In one of the first videos on my channel, I make the claim that legacy support is the lifeblood of Yu-Gi-Oh! And much product is designed with that core value in mind. Digging? So like, I kind of I kind of concur and agree with them about that, you know? Can I have a set rotation Yu-Gi-Oh! So like, the classic sets, everything that came at the very beginning of Yu-Gi-Oh, a good majority of people still want to play, people my age, just for like the nostalgia. Or like, let's say you had your, you had a duel that you really liked that you watched on the screen. You wanted to like replicate it with your friends and stuff like that, but it never really had the proper kind of support to make them actual competitive decks. And now they do, which is pretty dope because Blue Eyes is making a comeback right now is the lifeblood of Yu-Gi-Oh! And much product is designed with that core value in mind. Digging through the annals of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s animated past to bring into the modern day cards from yesteryear. I mean, in the past year alone, we've gotten Yubel, Gate Guardian, Gold Sarcophagus, Volcanics, the list goes on forever. And while I'm a big advocate for this method of support, and I'm as easy to nostalgibate as anybody, I think that we're in agreement that we're nearing the end of the line for anime legacy support. I mean, really? Doodle Beasts? We can't <laughs> keep living off the corpse of DM and GX forever. As much as I love those series deeply, it's clear when something begins to stagnate, and you can only circumambulate so many times before it turns into spinning the drain. We need a new main series Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. Something to breathe life into the TCG once again. I believe that to be true too. You know, because if we ended up getting a brand new Yu-Gi-Oh! series with like 
a new uh, a new protagonist, the new antagonist, and stuff like that, to give us ideas for like new cards, new decks, all of that, or like cards that you rarely see played, like so very rarely played. Maybe you could make them into their own kind of archetype and have those at like YCSs. You'd end up seeing more of them, right? And get people excited. This will not only reinvigorate current fans, but will set the stage for legacy support for years to come. Ten years from now, when we're getting Dingus Goblin legacy support instead of the 16th wave of Salamangrates, it will feel as fresh to fans then as it does to us now. Protecting posterity and ensuring the long-term health of your brand is something that far-seeking, intelligent companies do. There are. I feel like brands should grow with their audience and like don't get me wrong they could have side things to try and captivate new people but a good majority of people have like younger siblings younger family members where it's like i remember when my older brother or sister or cousin or whatever right w was playing that it's like oh i remember that from back in the day they had a lot of fun doing it and then you could even teach them about it there are a few hurdles that must be jumped when discussing the potential for a new main but they series. But they should age Typically, with new uh, their TCG audience. animes coincide with the release of a new master rule and a new summoning mechanic. Synchros in 5Ds, pendulums in Arc 5, etc. And while there's much in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community that we don't agree on, I think most of us are in consensus that we don't need a new summoning mechanic. While a new mechanic would make introducing a new series easy and expand the design space, I don't know that there's room in the game for a new summoning mechanic especially when the mechanics we already have are getting watered down and diluted as is. Synchro monsters that don't require tuners, fusion monsters that fusion summon themselves with materials from Grave, etc. Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't in a space for a new summoning mechanic. I personally think that this is an opportunity to create a Yu-Gi-Oh! anime that doesn't need to lean on a new summoning mechanic to push the show, maybe using those resources to instead focus on characters or a more cohesive plot. I don't think that this is likely. Much of the reason they've shifted to Rush Jewels in the first place is out of this idea of simplifying the game. So, adding an additional layer of complexity or continuing with more of the same just doesn't make sense. Even the Rush Duel animes relied on pushing a new product, in this instance an entirely new game, in order to justify the anime's existence. And at some point it begs the question of what Konami wants from their franchise. Not It's a good question to ask Konami too, what it is that they <coughs> expect and want from the franchise, right? Because they did come out with uh, Sevens, where it, it is a completely different game. It's more user-friendly, more like uh, if you're just coming into playing Yu-Gi-Oh, it's more suitable for that or even younger kids you know every media property has to be some massively intertwined multi-avenue superstar but i can't be the only one who just wants more from our game obviously the new series 7 and go rush have taken much of the attention in the anime space over the past handful of years and with go rush still in production it seems like the ship has sailed on a new main series anime there is one more possible route to a Yu-Gi-Oh! anime that is worth discussing. In February of this year, Konami released a short video titled Yu-Gi-Oh! The Chronicles, which featured short and That would be cool. I already know what he's about to be getting into, but that would that'd be cool. Like, yo, if they end up getting back into the lore of it and take it all the way back to ancient Egypt, where you had the pharaoh and everything, and you end up playing out that whole entire timeline instead of just, like, memories and, like, vague pieces sticking it together throughout the original anime i think that would be dope and then you'd even be able they can make new cards where it'd be like hieroglyphics right the way how they have them on the stone tablets there make it make cards like that i think that'd be pretty cool animated sequences of various archetypes from melfi's to sky striker and basically fulfilled what many in the player base have been asking for for a long time Instead of a main series anime about playing Yu-Gi-Oh!, just give us an anime about the cards themselves. People have been discussing the potential of archetypes like World Legacy or Branded cool for too. years, and seeing something like this manifested got a lot of people's hopes up. I'm a little more pessimistic than many, and I don't believe this is going to translate into a full-on animated series, and certainly not something that is concurrent alongside set releases. I think we're a long ways off from the Snake Eyes Diabellstar anime releasing alongside core set launches, but it is something 
something to be hopeful about. This is something that I don't think I'm in the minority about. Even players that don't care about the anime in the least recognize how important anime support is in increasing the game's popularity and staying power in the culture. We should be upset that so many of the pop culture references and memes from our franchise are over 20 years old. If that's not stale, I don't know what is. It may be possible that we're never getting away from Yugi and Kai. <laughs> It may be that that's what many of us would prefer. All I'm trying to say is that if we don't want to be making screw the rules, I have money jokes a decade from now, we're going to need new energy put into the space. And I think that an exciting new anime could come around and be a major player in doing just that. I That'd hope you guys cool, enjoyed huh? the video. Make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff if you did. And remember to wash behind your ears. Well, we're, we're pretty much going to call it there, but that's, that's a pretty good idea for them to come out with a brand new anime series because we <clears throat> a good majority of us would end up getting into it too right i feel and then you'd be able to captivate a newer audience whether it be just the cars i still feel that they should do a whole series about the ancient egyptian ways the way how they used to duel with shadow games and stuff like that back in the day how everybody has their millennium piece and whatever and how they used to contracept themselves using the piece in the ancient Egyptian ways and stuff with all all the magic powers and stuff like that that they had going on. But yeah, no man. That was Yu-Gi-Oh! Isn't the Same Without an Anime by Faker. Feel free to check Faker out. All links will be down in the description below. Let me know what you think also down in the comments. And if you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, think about becoming a channel member. And with that being said, man, have yourselves a good one. Peace.